chapter two here by talking about the additions of SQL Server. So this whole chapter is somewhat of your pre-planning. You need to know what the additions are. You need to know about how licensing works, how much you should expect to budget for a particular server. Uh, and we'll also talk a little bit about what's new in SQL Server 2012. Now, let me just tell you, the, when we do get to the what's new, and we'll talk about the history, um, when we get to what's new, it's really just a, here's a whole bunch of things that are new because we don't have time in this chapter to show you demos. We don't even have SQL Server 2012 installed yet in the course. So <laughs> we're going to just kind of do a quick drive-by of here's the new things. And then as we get to those points in the course, we'll flesh those out and expand on those a little bit more. So here's our, our chapter outline here. We'll start with the additions. We'll work into the architecture, 32-bit or 64, uh, talk about licensing, and then get into the what's new. Okay, so let's start additions here. A couple of key terms you need to know. You probably already know this, but just to make sure we're all on the same page. So SQL Server 2012 is what we call the major version. Okay, so we'll talk about uh, how to do versions and find out that information on an installation once we already have it installed. Just understand that major versions then are what you know. This is what you talk about with people. What version of SQL Server do you have? SQL Server 2012. What version of SQL Server do you have? SQL Server 2008. Okay, Those are the major versions. Now, every major version has additions. Okay? The additions define what features that SQL Server installation will have. Okay? And it's, it follows that the more money you spend, the more features you will get. Okay? Now, there are three categories of additions. Now, before I, I lay these out here, let me just say, these are not my categories. I didn't come up with these. These are Microsoft's categories. Um, but I don't know anybody that talks about these categories. These categories, from what I can tell, are purely marketing speak. They're simply a way for Microsoft to refer to them uh, in some documentation somewhere. But we'll use this because it does make it a little easier to group these all together. But nobody's going to know these if you're probably talking with them. Okay? So they have the principal category, and that's probably what you are using at your company. Uh, then they have the specialized categories, and that's a, there's really only one edition, and it's for a very special use case. And then they have what's called the breadth edition, which I'm not a big fan of that name. I think that name is pure marketing schlock there. It just simply means we need to get SQL Server in as many hands as we possibly can. It's kind of what I guess that's supposed to mean by breadth. <laughs> the comparison here that I've put up this little table, just so you know, the little half circle there means that it depends on the edition. So, for example, can you use the principal editions for production-level work? Yeah, absolutely. What about the specialized? Yes. What about the breadth? Depends on the edition. Okay? There's going to be several editions. We'll get into those here in a little bit. Can you use all of the available hardware on the machine? Notice that none of these has a big green circle for it. Okay? The principal editions have, well, it depends on the edition. Okay? And, you know, this one I put in here, this one is probably out of place, or it's uh, one of these is not like the other. Uh, what this really means, I'm trying to dispel a myth <laughs> that it doesn't matter what class I teach, if somebody comes into that class with this idea that they have to kick all of the users out of the database before they can take a backup up. No, every version of SQL Server, every edition of SQL Server allows you to take a backup of the database, even if you have users in the database. Just go ahead and get that in your head. Um, support multiple instances, they all do. If you're not familiar with instances, we will cover that a little bit more in Chapter 3. Um, can you use Windows Authentication? Yes. And does it include integration services, SQL Server integration services, reporting services, or analysis services, SQL Server analysis services? Notice that all of the principal editions do, uh, but it kind of depends on the edition for the breadth. Okay. okay, so here's a breakdown. There are effectively seven editions of SQL Server 2012 Enterprise. Business Intelligence, Standard, Web, Express, Evaluation, and Developer. Okay. 
Some of you might be saying, well, Scott, where's the SQL Server Compact Edition? Well, it's really SQL Server Compact 4.0, uh, so it's not quite SQL Server 2012 Compact uh, here. So we're going to focus just on these six, uh, sorry, seven editions here, okay? And if you wanted to put a metric down here that showed you uh, cost-wise, you know, the principal ones are going to be the most expensive, uh, and the breadth ones, some of those are free, some of them cost just a very small amount. We'll talk again about licensing. So don't ask how much does it cost just yet, right? Because <laughs> we have to get into licensing, and we'll do that in maybe like three or four videos from now. Okay. <laughs> So let's talk about Enterprise division, uh, Edition here. This is the big dog. Okay, It's the most expensive one. It has all of the features of SQL Server 2012. Yes, all of the features. Uh, reporting services, integration services, analysis services, database engine, all of the features of all of them. Okay, It supports what's called the OS Max hardware, meaning that whatever your operating system edition supports is how much of that particular hardware you can use for that SQL Server. Okay, so OS Max. Okay. You'll see that again. That's why I mentioned it. The target audience for Enterprise Edition in SQL Server 2012, I think, is a little bit different than what it used to be in maybe SQL Server 2008 or certainly SQL Server 2000, a big difference. Um, it used to be in the old days that you bought the Enterprise Edition only if you were dealing with massive, massive data sets and you were a really large organization. Today, though, I, I think that it's really for maybe, you may even see several small organizations using the Enterprise Edition. Uh, Microsoft has done a savvy job of making certain features available only in the Enterprise Edition. And you may be, quote unquote, bitten by that and that the feature you need needs, requires the Enterprise Edition. Um, no longer do you need to have a 500 gig database before you can kind of cost uh, in the enterprise edition. It could be that you have a, you know, a 100 gig database and, and enterprise edition makes sense for you. So I think that the target market in years past would have been large organizations for enterprise edition. And Microsoft has really kind of pushed that down uh, to medium organizations today. Okay. And we'll see the cost changes and the licensing changes uh, also in the couple of videos from now. Now, the Evaluation Edition. This is the exact same feature set as the uh, Enterprise Edition, but it's only licensed for evaluation purposes. Right? You put an Evaluation Edition machine uh, up on the network and you test things out. You, you want to see, is this what we want to use? We want to try our database out on it. It does have a 180-day trial. Uh, but it is all of the same features. And you have a nice way to upgrade from the evaluation edition to enterprise or standard or another edition uh, that you need to work with. Okay, We'll actually talk about how to upgrade from the evaluation edition when we get to chapter three. It's fairly uh, pretty painless, I think. The, the, excuse me, the developer edition. This is what I'm going to be using most of the time when we're doing the course here. It's also the same features as the enterprise edition. The license is a little bit different. You're only allowed to do development and testing. Okay, so hence developer edition. So no production level work there. There is no time trial with it, so no 180 days. Um, you can go up, uh, I think I went to Amazon and bought mine for something like $45. If you have an MSDN subscription, it comes with the MSDN subscription, uh, so check for that. And you can also upgrade the developer edition to other editions if you were to need to. Okay. Now, those are the all features. All of the other editions are crippled in some way, meaning that they uh, don't allow you to use all of the OS Max hardware or and uh, such as they put memory, put limits on your memory or limits on the CPU uh, or they don't support all of the features. So you may not be able to use analysis services or you may not be able to uh, use scheduling and reporting services, for example. Okay. So let's kind of get into working with those other editions. We'll start with the standard. Okay, so we went through the enterprise, the evaluation, and developer, and we said that those are, from a feature standpoint, those are identical. 
Okay, it's just the licensing that's different. Okay? So now let's get into the others. Okay? Standard edition. This is going to support most of the features in SQL 2012. Okay? And standard edition is going to include your database engine, reporting services, analysis services, integration services. Most of the features of each of those that you need are found in the standard edition. Okay? Not all of the features are available, but most are. Okay? Now, your memory, they do put a limit on this. You are limited to 64 gigs of memory. Okay? And your CPU is also limited to the lesser of four sockets or 16 cores for all of the services. Okay? So that's the limit for the database engine. That's the limit for reporting services. That's the limit for analysis services. Okay? Four sockets or 16 cores, whichever is lesser. Okay? So this is, this is becoming very, uh, you know, I don't want to get too much into that yet because that's going to be a key part of our licensing video is this whole socket versus core and why this matters and, and all of that, okay? Business Intelligence Edition, okay? Same as the standard, except more features and more hardware for the BI specific components, okay? For example... In the CPU, the database engine has the same hardwired limit that it did in standard edition, okay? Lesser of four sockets or 16 cores. However, for analysis services and reporting services, now we can use the operating system maximum, okay? So it's the same as enterprise edition from a CPU standpoint for analysis services and reporting services, okay? So what's the difference between BI and standard edition? Standard edition is just your typical SQL Server. You have your typical relational database uh, management system along with the basic features of integration services, analysis services, reporting services. And trust me, when I say basic features, I mean most of the features that you would probably need. Okay? Most of the features that a small to medium-sized company would need are found in the standard edition. Okay? The BI edition adds the additional hardware support, okay? We, we can now go up to OS Max for analysis services and reporting services, okay? That's our business intelligence, okay? We also add things like data quality services, master data services, the power pivot, power view for SharePoint, uh, the self-service BI. So it is a business intelligence edition. This is for a company who is using a lot of the business intelligence features of SQL Server 2012, but doesn't quite need the enterprise edition. They don't need the full feature set it could, because there is a cost difference between business intelligence edition and enterprise edition. We'll see more of that when we talk about licensing. And I pulled this straight off of the Microsoft website here. This is just a comparison of the three principal editions, what they call the three main editions on this uh, particular graphic here, Enterprise, BI, and Standard. Uh, notice where it says OS Max BI. So what this means right here, just to interpret this, 16 cores is for the database engine, and then OS Max for BI, Okay, whereas the Enterprise says OS Max for all of the components. Okay. Again, we'll talk more about the licensing. But really, you just have these three areas over here from a feature standpoint that are different in the business intelligence to standard. And if we take a look at those, those are the enterprise data management, DQS, MDS, um, data quality services, master data services, the self-service business, power view, power pivot, uh, and the corporate business intelligence, which is the semantic model. Uh, we'll talk about tabular. Um, we'll talk about uh, KPIs and, and other things. You just don't have those functionality in the standard edition. Okay. Okay. So we kind of have run out of time here. So let's come back and talk about the express editions and the web editions.